as time went on, those things fused together for me so solidly that creating my own music, it was just a natural progression that those genres mixed together in that way would be a part of my creative process. We had a toy piano in the house, so age three, here I am banging away on this toy piano, having a great time by myself in the corner. My parents thought it was real cute for a while from what they told me, and then some time passed and they said, we need to either get him to lessons so that he's playing actual music, or we need to take away this toy piano because it's not cute anymore. And I don't blame them for that. So at the beginning when I thought I was gonna be a pianist and I was so into Andre Watts and Rubinstein and Horowitz. At the same time, I'm having a good time with George Clinton, with Funkadelic, with Prince. Later on, that started to develop into an appreciation of house, which is where we get to the whole thing with Orpheus. In the same way that let's say somebody like a Liszt or Paganini back in the day, could affect audiences by the way they improvised on their own music. What Frankie Knuckles and these other people could do by improvising on their music and other people's music to a crowd of people in a club. Cut to several years later, when I started to get the idea of combining this music with a particular story that I've always been fascinated by, which is the story of Orpheus and Eurydice from the ancient story as created by Ovid in Metamorphoses. And after having started working on Orpheus, and sort of set it aside and gone on to other things. I was, had a corporate job working as a vice president at Universal Music Group. I was consulting and working for other folks. I was still singing, performing as a classical musician, as an opera singer. I was writing and producing and doing all of these various things. But Orpheus itself, as, a, as an ever-evolving project that it was before all of these other things started, it was sitting by itself in a corner. Every so often I'd be going to work on something else and I'd see Orpheus, the folder, sitting right there, untouched and unloved, and it started calling to me. One of the people to whom I sent the link was a dear friend of mine that I've known for years, Charles Randolph Wright. And his first words out of his mouth were, we're doing this. I said, all right, yes we are, I am down, let's go. And when he said he wanted to do a project that had house music and opera, I, I couldn't believe what that could do until I heard it. And each one is authentic. The house music is authentic, the opera is authentic, and they don't try to change each other. That's what's very exciting. And he said, I'm going to London to meet with a few people. I'd like to take you with me. I'd like you to be there so that we can talk to some of them about Orpheus. I started talking about Orpheus and the concept and the music. And then I said, well, why don't I just play a couple of tracks and you can hear essentially what the point is. He said, sure, hand to the Lord. 75 seconds into the first track that I played him, which I think was one of Pluto's solos, he said, I'm sold, we're doing this. The next thing he did was turn to Charles and say, when can you be free to direct this show? Charles and I looked at each other like this. Yeah, I, I kind of lost my mind. I kind of, my face just went a bit like this. That face. And then I just started that going, face. and my head, my neck was like going, hold on, hold on, because it was brilliant. This is a combination of musical theater and of opera and of the garage raves that we used to go to when we were younger. So he's my black Lin-Manuel Miranda, you know, because he created all of it, he created all of this, and is starring in it. Now I was singing the title character, also writing the show, the entire thing. The libretto, the music, the tracks I was producing because the entire show was scheduled to run to a pre-existing audio track, which means I was producing and essentially partially engineering all of that, the learning curve that I was about to hit <laughs> in being a part of the show on so many levels was beyond what I expected. And it came very quickly and I had to learn very quickly.
One of the most exciting things for me, and I'm about to have a slight fanboy moment here, when I found out that Kwame, both Kwame and Charles knew this gentleman, and that they both thought that he would be the perfect person to ask to do the costumes for this show, I kind of lost it. I'm still in shock because Oswald Boateng, I, I, I'm fanboying every second of the day because he, what he brings to this, first of all, is elegance. It's such class, but taking this to a level that you don't expect. His sense of what the fabric looks like under the light when it's moving is exactly what's needed for something like this, where every person on stage is going to be heavily invested in movement. The body language of every character on stage, whether it's a dancer, singer, actor, whatever, is so much a part of the entire show vision. And to hear Oswald Boateng say that he had never actually agreed to do a theatrical production until Orpheus was more than I could ever have hoped for. To Zoom call into <laughs> discussion meetings about costumes and design and scheduling and to see my picture with my name on a whiteboard with Oswald Boateng pointing to it, talking about what I would be wearing in a show that I wrote that's about to be produced at the Young Vic Theater. Even thinking about it now, the entire thing was so overwhelming in the most wonderful way. To be able to do something that makes a difference Amen. and you feel it, Amen. and you feel even tonight feeling all these people from different places going, okay, I get this. Because you can't explain this show. You can't. You have to come and experience it and then you know it. I never knew anybody it would, outside of my own ears would ever hear any of this music. The fact that this is now happening with these wonderful people and with all of you, I am simply overwhelmed. Thank you. It, it's really hard to put into words exactly what that feeling is to see not only something that you gave birth to coming to fruition, but coming to fruition at such an indescribably high and intensely skilled level. It was, it was beyond what I could have hoped for. I'm made.